This is what was left from last week, six guitars. And this is what they graced our presence with this week. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Time for the weekly Mod Collection Demo Shop update. Alright, let's just go ahead and get into it. Apparently the guy who decides what guitars they post every week thought November 2nd was a great time to dump even more Halloween guitars, but here's our first one, an SG, that they slap some bat decals on. I mean, it's kind of cool, but not my favorite thing that they've ever done. But at least we've got the voodoo-style red and black pickups going on, and it's a sweet dusk finish. And, ah, uh, okay, I see what you guys did there. You put a bat back here. Okay, that one's cool now. Although still not as cool as the Black Widow or the Cobra. But they got created with the name Battleac. But by far the most interesting one this week was Strange Stripe. So from far away, I just thought it was like some weird zebra stripes, but then the name sunk in. You know, these are rather strange stripes. They're a little bit jagged. I think what they were going for here is Joker vibes, because you've got a little bit of purple going on, dirty fingers, really hot pickups, blacked out hardware. But you gotta remember, this is a tribute, so normally it would have been a satin finish. This looks like it was done up in gloss, and I really appreciate the fact that they gave it a faux binding look. Because you've got this big black border around the entire thing. But at a $2,300 price tag, I was hoping we would see something similar on the back. However, we did not. But we did get a fancy old-time Gibson logo, which I feel is very appropriate on this model. But next up, Gibson gave themselves first prize. Congratulations. If you don't understand what I mean, you soon will. So this Les Paul Custom is called Blue Ribbon Sparkle. It's about 7,000 bucks. So I initially click on it going, uh, okay, it's, it's just a regular custom. But then if you really zoom in here, it's like, all right, it's got some sort of a sparkly finish. That's cool, but still seems oddly expensive for what it is. So you get to the back of the headstock and it's like, oh, okay, we got a blue ribbon type thing going on with a big old blue stinger. But then you see the whole thing and it's like, ah, in interesting. It's actually a extended stinger going halfway down the neck. And then they've got this interesting swirling pattern of a blue ribbon that ends on the body. I feel like this is supposed to be in like the CEO's office hung up backwards or like this was a prize. There's a blue ribbon and whatever the other colors are for like some sort of a contest. So maybe we'll see the other ribbon colors in the future, but it's kind of quirky. I just don't know who is it actually for? Because let's face it, you can buy yourself a trophy, but it doesn't mean anything unless you won it somehow. But I'd be really interested to see this in person, so if anybody bought it, send me photos, because I bet this looks really cool in natural lighting. But of course, I might be jumping the gun here. Did it actually sell for 7000 No, it didn't. Oh! <laughs> Blue ribbon, first prize, doesn't sell. And if this remains unsold, I think Gibson should gift it to their number one dealer for 2022, because then, then it would mean something. Next up is a regular Les Paul Studio and Heritage Cherry at 1500 bucks. At first, I was going to throw this one into garbage tier, but there's a few things that make it special. A, it's a studio that has, you know, an okay flame top. I mean, it's not fantastic, but it's pretty darn good for a studio. I don't quite care too much for the modifications they did to it, but it looks nice. But on top of the flame top, Look at the back mahogany. This one has a lot of ribbon stripes, so that's going to dance around. That really reminds me of the Mosaic Les Paul Jr. They just inlaid a whole bunch of different kinds of mahogany to give it an interesting mosaic look. It was one of those weird 2018 things. Don't ask me. I want one. If anybody is selling one, please let me know. But they did it in natural, and then there was also a, a red one for some reason, because why not just cover over all your artwork in a dark finish that hides the whole point? So there's worse things you could spend 1500 bucks on. Next up, a worn white satin special tribute. And it's got the whole black and white vibes going on, so kind of cool in that aspect. But then, black stinger on the back happens. That was a pretty fair price for that. It sold quickly. And then I had people messaging me trying to find it, as well as the person who got it saying, I'm so happy I finally got something. There's also a Les Paul Modern sparkling burgundy finish, except for they modded it out like a very vintage inspired one with a Bigsby B7 Vibramate. So it looks really cool from the front, but has the modern playability, kind of, on the back. Compound radius and all that good stuff on the fretboard too. Not a bad price, if that's what you're going for. Then I hate it. I miss this one when clicking through everything because nothing really caught my eye to buy this time until I was slowly going through everything, making sure I wasn't missing anything, and then Regal Eggplant happened. A straight up purple three pickup Les Paul Custom. 
This really just reminds me of the Kingfish telly we reviewed not too long ago. Now granted, it's not a 57 reissue, so it's not like that $7,000 reissue. It's just your regular like $45 to $5,000 is brand new. But it's got the custom color. They added the third pickup into it. And it was kind of a full refinish. I mean, they at least did the entire body, but I kind of agree with the fact that they left the back of the neck black. It matches great with the black back plates. And it appears to actually have black sides? Whoa, whoa, whoa. 8.25 pounds, that's incredible. And it's chambered, okay. This had to have been an abandoned made to measure or something didn't quite work out. That was a steal. Like that is easily worth 6,500. Now that I know that it's a custom shop chambered body all on top of it. Then there's a 60 standard in faded green. It reminds me of like what they were doing in the mid 2010s era. They did a seafoam finish like that, but a natural back. The standard 50s in autumn fade looks really good with the gold hardware and the red finish. But yeah, a natural back, but ooh, some decent figuring within that neck. Might not have noticed it unless I had pointed it out, but I bet that dances crazily in the light. There's an SG Custom in an unusual finish. I mean, they called it antique natural, but no, antique natural means natural finish that's been slightly aged. This is like pumpkin spice slash tobacco burst or something. There's no pick guard on it. They got all the super aged hardware and it was a full on refinish. Man, guys, why, why wasn't this the October update? Why was this the November one? It all probably comes down to publishing times though. Like all this stuff has probably been ready and available for months, but at least when I talked to the guy who runs this about a year or so ago, they send this off to a company over in California who ends up doing all the posting for them. So sometimes there can be delays in that aspect. Aspect. Then you also had Violet Tart 60 Standard, if you missed out on that custom, but not quite the same. Although the red back with the purple top would probably look cool on the side profile shot. You can kind of get the effect right here. Now we've got the garbage tier ones, Blacktop Pavement ES355. This one reminds me of some of the late 70s ES models that came stock with the uncovered pickups. I feel bad putting this in garbage tier, but this finish has been used a few times in the mod collection, but it just looks like black. I can't see what's special about it in the stock photography. Give us some more to go off of. Is it just black or is there something else? Is there like some cracks in it or something? But it appears they left the neck alone on that one. Then we have this Les Paul Classic 1300. They call it Oxblood, so that means this is technically a very dark red. You just need to see it in very bright lights. And then the back is a bright red, apparently. Maybe that one doesn't belong in garbage tier. That would probably look pretty good in person. There's the L00 standard. They gave it a gloss top and satin back and sides. Not necessarily that special. Though they are cool guitars. Then we had a regular Honey Burst Classic. Not the most exciting thing that they've ever put in their shop, but oh, mod collection guys, you messed up. That's not a classic, that's a classic light. That changes everything. So that was an AMS exclusive. That's why that one's so light. Oh, well, that's hilarious. If somebody would have saw that weight and thought it was a full bodied one, of course you'd pick it up a Les Paul at seven pounds. Then there was a standard 50s gold top P90s that they played with the plastics. All right, that's it for the mod collection. Now let's check out the demo shop. So we'll start off with the standard 60s. Ice T, I mean, yeah, it's an okay flame top. It's got some interesting characteristics if you were shopping for a guitar like this. Some nice wood grain on the back. But what made me want to talk about it here is actually the overspray that occurred right here. I mean, normally when I think overspray, it's like, okay, a little bit of clear coat, weird stuff going on. But no, that is like a, a silver sparkle metallic overspray. And it's like, okay, that's like one of those happy accidents, I guess. It's fascinating. Then we had a white double neck on this drop, which if you want to get your Alex Lifeson or any of the other various people who have had signature white EDS 1275s vibes on, it was a slightly less expensive way to do that. But I could not figure out what on earth happened here. It looks like some ghoul took his nails and just went whoosh, whoosh straight down. And then we had some black scuffing over here. That was probably just contamination within the paint booth. Then we got this SG. Let's see, why did I throw this in here? That's why. During setup, it got some pretty nasty gouges on it in more locations than one. You always gotta be careful with those new finishes. They're very soft. 
But now as far as a custom color, here's a Candy Apple Blue 64 335. It's kind of like those purple ones we were looking at earlier, it's just a dark blue. That's a pretty smart looking piece. That's why it looks strange. We've got a 355 style pick guard here, you know, like Les Paul custom like attributes here. The dark finish almost makes this look like an ebony board, but yet we don't have the custom emblem up here. That's okay, because the crown's cool too, but I'd actually like to see one of these with an ebony board with the small block inlays. Then there was this J45 from the original collection in the 50s style, relatively unassuming. Until you get to the back, it almost looks like something dripped down the back that was eating the lacquer as it went. I mean, there are chemicals that can do that. Sometimes even bug sprays will destroy the finish on your guitar. However, if you read the description, they actually said there's some sort of a seam repair that's, get this, slightly visible. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, this is bright lights on it so you can see it so maybe it's less apparent in regular situations but they're trying to show it to you to the best of their abilities and then this custom access kind of reminds me of my 125th anniversary les paul supreme as far as the top goes i mean not quite the same caliber as what's on that but it was a very tight flame but then he got all the scratching it's like why are they showing us that that's just like what the typical vos job looks like even though this model doesn't typically get that but then he got a couple of dings back here then you don't see a 68 reissue every day in the demo shop. These things just always look so cool. This one's actually got the 70s style logo on it. But something about this photo angle and like the reflections just makes that serial number and made in USA stamp look very strange. But hey, 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 hold the phone. I thought that was strange. I, I was willing to say, okay, the weird logo being 70s, I'll write that off as a weird anomaly. But we've got a volute. My friends, this, this was not a 68 reissue. Issue. This was a 74 reissue, and that was a steal. Although, if you actually come down to the description, it tells you 74. Uh, I'm very confused. Were they trying to blend 68 and 74, or was this just supposed to say 74? Oh my goodness, they did the sandwiched body on that? You don't always find that on the 74s. That's something new that Gibson kind of started doing, as far as I'm aware anyways, around the time of the Mike Nest Deluxe. Then a 70s Explorer, which they didn't really do too much to. I just wanted to point it out because we got a little bit of finish bleed in here with a red color of some sort. Might have been from the case. But if you look right here, you can actually see somebody has accidentally buffed through the finish back to the bare mahogany. But this is the first time I'm starting to see that red right here in that area and in this area in general. I'm betting they took this back to the buffing wheel to see if they could get it out. And that's when they went to extreme, and that's why that happened. It wasn't a boo-boo during the initial finish job, it was the case leached into it, and they were trying to repair it for a customer, and probably just sent them out a fresh one. But now as far as the European side of things go, a few notable things to talk about. They seemingly changed their backdrop. It's either that or the color balance on their cameras a little different this week, and someone was getting artsy with charcoal. But this was an SG standard. It was like a thousand bucks, really good price in that particular market. But then you had this one for about 1200. It likely started life as just a black SG standard, but they threw one of these vibrolas on it, so it makes it more expensive. But that was a pretty good deal for one of these things too. Oh, it looks like they played with our uh, tuner washers a bit too, to give it a little bit more color variation. The 60 standard was about two grand. This top works really well with this really old sunken treasure type aging to the pickup covers. It's just, I feel like they just needed that up here as well. Then you got your tortoise guard. It's this photo right here that really sells it. It's got an interesting vibe. However, these knobs just, they need a, a little bit more age to match with this, you know? And then, wow, that's a bright photo. Translucent cherry. I'm curious if they just hired someone new to take the photos, and that, that's why they look a little bit different on some of these. So the exposure seems quite vibrant on these photos. But who am I to judge? I'm not very good at the photography side either. And then there's also 56 gold top, more accurately described as an all gold. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. I know I did. Even while recording this, I found some things I missed the first and second time. So overall, I would say it was a good week. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, perhaps you'd like to check out one of these mod collection guitars in the flesh. This is a review of the very highly coveted Cosmic Stew exclusive finish.